Bethesda kind of sucks. And yet, they're one of my favourite developers. One of the few AAA outlets left that get me worked up about every single one of their releases. I've put hundreds of hours into every mainline Fallout and Elder Scrolls release, and yet every successive entry in both of those series gets progressively worse. I've already put 80 odd hours into Starfield, and this game has killed the little faith I had left in a studio that seems to be actively destroying its own ideals, standards, and general competence. And I can't wait for Elder Scrolls 6. I love Bethesda. There's nobody else out there that does what they do. Bethesda games to me are microcosms. Each one a giant world filled with adventure, discovery, companionship and a sense of freedom unlike any you've ever known in your own waking life. Your own diorama replete with branching paths, fame and misfortune and an entire cast of actors playing just for you. A full and complete universe contained entirely in the vessel of your choice. I came really late to the party with Bethesda. Fallout 3 was my first ever Bethesda game. I didn't play Fallout 1 and 2 back in the day, so I came to it with very few expectations. And my first impression of it was that it was ugly. Real nasty. I thought this was some whack-ass Eurojank shit. I mean, I'm talking, I thought this was a game trying to cash in on people's hopefully ironic love of two worlds. And two worlds was some fucking nerd shit, man. My second impression of Fallout 3 was that it made me feel cosy at times, in a way that a video game had never made me feel before. And after fighting the awful mechanics for 40 or so hours, I started to understand why it made me feel so cosy. Fallout 3 has player homes, little safe spaces that allow you to hunker down in a harsh world. I'd played games with player houses in them before, but in Fallout 3, the player homes feel like little rest stops along an insurmountable journey. A place where you can resupply, rest up and bed down for the night. The one place you can make your own in a world that's constantly trying to end you. The moment you step out that door, any number of things could ruin your day. But in here, you can decorate, read the books you've collected along the way and grab a bite to eat with your weird looking buddy. There are two player homes in Fallout 3. A ten penny tower suite and a corrugated iron hut in a ramshackle town. You can only own one at a time, and to get either one of them, you have to decide whether to nuke not only the best NPC in the game, but an entire town that gave you work, shelter, and an introduction to the bleak wasteland you suddenly found yourself fighting to survive in. Fallout 3's player homes feel so warm and inviting precisely because the world they inhabit is so well realised. Don't get me wrong, Fallout 3 has awful combat, embarrassing writing, and upsetting graphics even for the year it was released in but I'd never played a game like Fallout 3 before. The way the map was laid out, with little settlements full of characters and stories to be a part of, the tales you weave going about your journey, little detours along a grand path full of adventure, it all worked together in a way that, to me, at the time, made me feel like I was living in that world whenever I was playing in it. The strength and beauty of Bethesda games are the potential they generate within your own head. Fallout 3 was such a unique experience to me that after finishing 100 odd hour good, evil and neutral karma runs of the main quests, major factions and DLCs, I needed more. So I bought Oblivion and I fucking loved it. In 2008 when Fallout 3 came out, I of all people on this earth had the audacity to think that guns and lasers were cool but orcs and wizards were beneath me. So for me, to not just tolerate the fantasy elements that Oblivion was so deeply entrenched in, but actually revel in them, it had to be something pretty smanging. And it kinda was. I mean, it was dog shit, but it was amazing. If you can get past the unsettling faces, it had a bright, lush fantasy land dotted with vibrant townships, creepy elven sycophants, and uh, bustling cities. But in those bustling cities were player houses just like Fallout 3. Only this time, they weren't dark, dingy misery holes you could pretty up with bubble heads. They were welcoming homesteads in a magical land. I felt more at home in Oblivion than Fallout 3, despite my natural aversion to its more whimsical elements, because it was 
fucking solid. Whilst being even worse to play than Fallout 3. Fallout's gunplay is always about 10 years behind the industry standard, but the combat in the Elder Scrolls is so bad. So, so bad. Just baffling to me. I have no idea how an entire organization of people can ship a game with combat like this and be okay with it. These people take home a salary and still manage to sleep at night. I love the Elder Scrolls games, but come on. You either go range sneak thief, picking off one, maybe two enemies before alerting every soul in sight and backpedaling with a dagger for 20 minutes until level 20 when you can ghost an entire citadel on your own. Or you go wizard and fling 19 fireballs at a night only to have a bear spray you up against a tree in one hit. Or if you're dumb enough, you go melee and walk up to an enemy and click at them. You stand at the enemy. You and your adversaries walk at each other and flail your arms around and ping your shiny sticks off of each other. It's so awkward and I don't know how myself or anyone else can stand it. But I do because everything else about the game is amazing. But literally any other form of combat would be better. If we're being charitable, you might say that the combat in Bethesda games is so bad because they have bigger scope than the technology of their day allows them to grasp. That they only have a certain amount of time, people and resources, and that in order for Bethesda to create the immense worlds that they do, they have to make concessions in certain areas like combat and graphics. And you might also say it's to Bethesda's credit that they managed to draw you into their worlds in such a convincing manner, despite the limitations of the medium that they work in. But if we're being honest, it's not just the graphics and the combat that really let down Bethesda's output. They overcome the shittier aspects of themselves, but they never truly hit the potential they promised. And I only realized this when I played Fallout New Vegas. New Vegas might be my favorite game of all time. To me, it's the most convincing virtual world I've ever lived in. It allows a level of immersion that I've never seen another game even begin to approach. And it does so by paying attention to the little details that make a story believable. The writers, the devs and the artists all work together to manufacture a place that makes sense when you think about it. The quarry exists because the new California Republic needs concrete for infrastructure. The sharecroppers exist because as the area becomes more livable, it attracts more settlers. And those settlers need both food and jobs. And as those settlers come to New Vegas, they bring their own problems and demands that you get to witness and take part in. Obsidian realized what Bethesda never has, that if you want to make an immersive experience and you're limited by certain constraints, you have to think about the little details and make it all make sense. And I don't know if Bethesda will ever figure that out. Let's talk Skyrim for a bit. Skyrim was a fucking stonker for Bethesda. I can't really remember where it came from, but the hype around the release of Skyrim was off the fucking charts. Somehow, a sword and board D&D wankfest made its way to everyday people's attention. I remember Big Steve down at the pub asking me what that fucking wizard game was all about. Everyone knew about Skyrim. It made a billion quid in its first 30 days. A billion. And that fucking sucks. Because Skyrim was the first time Bethesda did the thing that they do now. They watered everything down. They simplified systems. They took the super nerdy shit that made Oblivion amazing and swapped it all out for spectacle. And that spectacle was dog wank. When I played New Vegas, I knew that it was made by a different developer, but I was sincerely thinking that Bethesda would take everything Obsidian did right with New Vegas and make it slightly prettier with Skyrim. But no, they went for style over substance and they were so handsomely rewarded for it. The public said, Yes, please. I like it real dumb. Here's a billion dollars. And fuck me, didn't they just run with that? Oblivion had this sick little spellcrafting thing. You join the mage guild, feed a bunch of resources into an altar, set some parameters, and the game gives you a spell of your own design. It's kind of the closest thing there is to when you were a little fella waving your arms around and creating spells in your head. It's dumb, and it almost always results in a fireball, but it's your fireball. You knew what sort of fireball you wanted to be able to use in this little fantasy world, and you made it happen. It feels empowering, and it sucks you into the world. But in Skyrim, you buy a book. That's it. You just buy a book, and now you can cast that spell. So if you had an idea in your heads, and you wanted to realize it, you now have to hope that the developers also had that idea. On its own, it's not a huge deal but it's one step that makes it a little harder to suspend your disbelief, which is kind of what worried me about Skyrim. It's full of streamlined and simplified versions of systems that were deeper in oblivion. 
we all know why making things more accessible gives them a much broader appeal and therefore gives you access to a wider market. And we all live in a capitalist hellhole, so all companies are compelled to make as much money as possible lest they fade away into mediocrity. But here's the thing big companies never seem to grasp. The more and more you dilute a thing to widen its appeal, the less it resembles the thing that made it unique in the first place. And sooner or later, people notice, and even the most casual fans won't be interested in whatever it is you bring to the table. So Skyrim was oblivion, but watered down to make it more accessible, and it paid off. Bethesda made fuck you money from Skyrim and learned the only lesson the rules of business ever allow anyone to learn. Do it again, but worse. Fallout 4. <sighs> right. I have some opinions about Fallout 4. Let me just start by saying that Fallout 4 is by far my most played game. I have nearly a thousand hours in Fallout 4 because of the player housing. Everyone else hates it, but I love the base building in Fallout 4. It's so bespoke. You can make the cozy little bunker of your dreams. You can build a completely custom settlement with walls, turrets, shops, power, and you can foster a community offering shelter and purpose to lost souls in a world constantly ravaged by violence and horror. And it's all pointless. The interface is terrible, the controls are imprecise, and without mods, the building constraints don't really allow for anything other than an ugly cube without painstakingly glitching every single piece into place. But the worst crime is the utter futility of it all. About four times a year, I get the urge to boot up Fallout 4, theorycraft the character in my head, play far enough into the story for me to find it believable that I've got enough resources to build a new settlement, then dump a hundred odd hours into building a wasteland paradise from the ground up. But inevitably, five hours into the run, I succumb to this awful little pang of nihilism. There's no point doing any of this, because once you've put all that time and thought into building your own custom oasis, that's it. There's nothing else. The rest of the game doesn't justify itself enough for me to buy into its premise. The world is flat and unconvincing. Locations make no sense and often just rely on a cheap gimmick as their only hook. After playing Skyrim, I knew it would be this way, but I was still disappointed that Bethesda took nothing from New Vegas. No subtlety, no nuance, just more streamlining and even more proc-gen piffle. Skyrim had radiant quests, but Fallout 4 went full steam ahead with them. You know a quest isn't handcrafted as soon as you speak to an NPC, because it just kind of feels off. Bethesda doesn't have the writers or the coders to pass the Turing test. Their dialogue is already wooden and stilted, but when you come up against a randomly generated bit of content in these games, it's so immediately obvious that it can't be convincing. Just like the removal of spellcrafting in Oblivion, the addition of randomized quests in Skyrim and Fallout 4 are another little thing that make it harder to buy into their world. And then the jump from Skyrim to Fallout 4, we saw a shift from unique weapons to randomly generated legendary weapons. Instead of conquering a grueling dungeon or an epic quest chain and being rewarded with something one of a kind to either use on your journey or hang on your wall as a fun reminder of a significant experience, now you do the dungeon or quest and you get a pistol that does plus four damage to raiders named Phil. And from Fallout 4 to Fallout 76, we lost NPCs. I still cannot wrap my head around this. Fallout, the series where you talk to an NPC, do a thing then talk to an NPC. Now had no NPC. <sighs> I don't really want to talk about Fallout 76. I didn't play it. I'm still in a very painful place and I've got a lot of things I need to work through. So let's shift the mood and take a bright look at a very optimistic future. Just kidding, it's only gonna get worse. Starfield came out two months ago and I've already got 80 hours in it. And I hate it. Fuck me, do I hate this game. Bethesda has demonstrated time and time again that with every new release, they're gonna strip away the things that people love about their games. But goddamn, this is fucking comical. You know how all throughout Fallout and the Elder Scrolls games, the entire unique selling point is that you can pick any direction on the horizon, go there and have the adventure of a lifetime. Yeah, not anymore. Now, there's fast travel and only fast travel. Oh, and I hope you like menus. 
Have you ever wanted to play an open world looter shooter base building story driven RPG that was 80% sub menus? Neither have I. But the thing is, after a while, I could forgive the fact that this game was Fast Travel Simulator 2023. But even then, after you've fast traveled yourself into a light coma, every single location in the game outside of three cities is mindless, randomized proc gen mulch. I wish I was joking, but this is Bethesda fully giving up. I really fuck with the shipbuilding in Starfield. Outside of the completely insane ladder placement, ruining the layout of the ship you spent four hours and half a million credits on. Making my own custom base and flying it around the galaxy is sick as fuck, but there's no point putting all that work in when there's nothing to see out there in the first place. Proc gen worlds like the one in Starfield are ultimately unfulfilling. I like to experience things in gaming once. I like to play a questline one way, then play it another way, and maybe a third. So each of those routes offers one perspective on the same quest, giving me three separate experiences. But with Proc Gen Worlds, once you've experienced one randomly filled pre-designed space, you've experienced them all. Starfield has giant planets randomly filled with the same six dungeons over and over, with absolutely nothing in between. And each of those six dungeon types feels exactly the same as the others. That's tens of thousands of the same experiences dotted all over one planet which is then replicated a thousand times in other planets all over its galaxy, as opposed to the hundreds of unique and handcrafted experiences offered in one map in previous titles. Bethesda is on track to make a billion dollars from Starfield. It made over a billion from Skyrim, and it made even more from Fallout 4. Every time Bethesda dumbs down its USPs, it's given even more money for its ever-decreasing efforts. Bethesda uses randomized quests and now locations, because handcrafted experience require time, people, and effort to make. And if they divert resources away from making unique, one-time aspects of their games in favor of infinite random ones, it means that they can put more time and effort into making their games look better and play better. Broader appeal for a wider audience and a larger payout. I've got this really bleak outlook on the future of Bethesda. Blander and blander releases culminating in an AI-driven vanilla paste in the form of infinite experiences that say absolutely nothing. A vast swathe of turgid pish fired at us once a year for us to cram in our waiting wars. I want Bethesda to refocus their efforts on the little details in their already amazing world. To narrow down on the smaller aspects that make them unique. I want them to go back to letting me do whatever I want to do and however I want to do it in a lovingly crafted world made just for me and my sense of escapism. I don't need higher fidelity graphics if the world I'm looking at is engaging enough to draw me in. And I only need passable gameplay if the tools I'm using are mine to create. I want Bethesda to do what they do best and stop focusing on the things that they do worst. I want to live in a world filled with infinite possibility, not in an infinite world filled with none. Oh, and to walk the same pace as the character I'm walking with in an escort sequence, it's, it's 2023. Come the fuck on. Thanks for watching.